Welcome to the final edition of the crossover with Joe R. Lucas. And let me tell you, there's no better way to finish off a season than with my next guest. We're talking about finishing off seasons. This guy did it in style this year, taking home almost every personal award you could possibly win. Plus, the best of all is winning his first year league title. And by the way, added a season and a final four MVP. He said more metal in his house. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to have Vasilya Misic here with me today. How are you, my man? Hi, hi. Thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Good. I'm good. Anything new in your life these days or is this the same old, same old stuff? The same old stuff. <laughs> uh, I would just add uh, uh, one more trophy of Turkish League, which is a big honor for us too uh, because uh, we, we won another title for the, ta for the team and uh, we complete very, very successful season in a good way. Do, do I dare ask you, did you get the MVP of the finals too? Well, I was close, really close, but Rodrigo Boba played tremendous last game. Boba got 30, it. And I, I was very happy for him. I pushed him to get the MVP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, you got to share You got to share some of that. Man, you might not have room in the house. Uh, yeah, that's true. But uh, the most important thing is that all of these trophies really came to me spontaneously because uh, it, was, uh, it was something that... Uh, I was really fine that everybody else can can win that too. Also in my team, uh, we have very good players, and I would I wouldn't be surprised if some of them won. But like this is even better feeling. I, I don't want to. I'm trying not to keep you too long today because I know you're in celebration mode and everybody's like pulling at you, you know, everywhere. But man, what what a what a crazy season, man! Like it's just so nuts to, to believe everything the way it finished and, and, and everything that you guys have accomplished and that you've accomplished throughout this whole season. What, what's the feeling like? I mean, can you, are you like walking on air? Uh, I'm, I'm heavy for the guard position, so I cannot walk in the air, but I'm on the ground <laughs> and uh, I'm still on the ground, but the feeling is really, really amazing. Uh, uh, um, I feel also empty a little bit because uh, uh, that emptiness is probably coming because of a lot of, a lot of uh, enthusiasm that we had pre before we went to Final Four and a lot of pressure that we, uh, we brought in the season before uh, we started this, this season because everybody looked at us as a, as a big favorite. Then suddenly we, we were in 11th position and all this pressure was uh, with all other players but most of, the, uh, most of the pressure was also on my shoulders because I was the, the point guard of the team and uh, with all delays from the players and everything. The, the feeling now is uh, like big relief uh, from that pressure and at the same time amazing feeling that uh, I, I cannot also describe with the words and uh, the previous, let's say, uh, uh, TV shows that I've been watching uh, EuroLeague winners and when they said that it's hard to describe this feeling is I definitely agree with them because you just have to experience that to be able to, to, to express that somehow or to, to enjoy and live that. In your answer, you you use the word that that I've always described to people too is that emptiness. It's it's an empty feeling afterwards. It's so weird that you fought and you and you and you desired something for so long that all of a sudden, even though you have it, the 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 the, the it's the fight is gone. There's nothing left, and there's an empty feeling at the end. That's such a weird feeling. Yeah, uh, I agree completely. Uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, I experienced that in my early age uh, because we, as a national team of Serbia, we always compete to win all championships, uh, starting from under 16 till uh, senior uh, competitions. And uh, I, I like always to mention that, uh, especially when you lose games, it's similar feeling. I remember that feeling when we lost 2019. It was kind of similar feeling uh, about emptiness, but uh, of course it's better to win uh, <laughs> and to finish the season with a victory. But uh, the feeling after that is exactly as you explained, and uh, uh, that's something that I learn learn from from it because uh, uh, if you if you don't experience uh, in your early age that it can really cost your because your consequences after after these kind of situations, but you in our life we have to be always ready for the new challenges. Uh, for example, very very soon after that uh, championship, we had this uh, final series mm -hmm. against Fenerbahce, which people watched here and uh, uh, people were very excited to watch us as the champions against Fener, who who has a great team. So I already put that on the side because I had to 
I had to get myself ready for for that series. And that's something that I, I'm handling easier than I, I expected because uh, that's the school. That's life school for me. And uh, that's how I approach to to better and good situation. But this this one is a little bit, uh, not a little bit, but it's kind of extreme for me because this is something that it's going to stay forever. Uh, yeah. It's going to stay forever. It's first for FS uh, in the history of the club. Uh, first for me for myself, uh, especially I'm coming from the basketball country. For us, it's very important to to bring something back home, and no matter mm-hmm. if it's a, a country championship or, or, or club. And I, with that emptiness also, is it's full of happiness uh, feeling. So I, it's something amazing, really. It's, it's a different emptiness when you have the, when you have the cup in your hand. It's not. <laughs> yes, it's a little bit heavier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a little heavier. Look, you you went through the whole thing. You started playing. I'm go back to your early days when you started playing at like six or seven years old in some club and in, in or whatever. And then you went to you went to Mega Visura, right? Visura, yes. For yes. Visura for four years, and you're but you're only 16 years old at the time, and that was. <clears throat> that was like your introduction, right? I mean, that's where you started like running into like real players. Yes. Uh, my my first stage of uh, professional career in sports uh, world was actually skiing. And I was really, really successful in that. And uh, I mentioned in some previous interviews about that, uh, what what I achieved there. And uh, I, this is still my biggest passion about sport and I, I still believe that I, I'm better skier than basketball player. This is, is that, something that also my father thinks too. But are you are you better than your sister? My sister is way better snowboarder than me. She was a world yeah, champion I'm, and Olympic I know. member. So yeah. Those, those, it's those, separate. It's different, different like a different sport, but it's it's still she's way, way uh better and, and she she uh, achieved more more accomplishments than me in, in that uh, sport but uh uh, that's that's pure happiness because this is something that I face first in my life and this is the first love you know it's it's basketball is actually how, second how how did how did your family become to get away from basketball from how did your family become such passionate skiers i mean you know you, you told me this uh, the other day in the final four you told me the same thing and i'm like yeah, I, don't, we, I don't i, I don't up. think the team wants you skiing anytime soon <laughs> yeah yeah I, I didn't ski for a long long time because of the rules in the contracts and the right. uh, uh, it's kind of dangerous for for uh, for us as basketball athletes and someone who who don't spend time on the snow. But uh, the reason why I started that that uh, it's uh, because I grew up in the mountains, mm-hmm. in the most famous mountain in Serbia. And logical thing was actually to start to ski because we have my father has a his own uh, job over there. Uh, we live that as, we live there as a family and. Uh, from 12 months, six months, you have snow and uh, nothing else to do and start slowly, slowly. <laughs> and then if you have some talent and work ethic, you you achieve many good things. That, and uh, then yeah. let's start from, from that story that you actually mentioned, this basketball career. I really didn't expect myself to be a basketball player. Uh, and right. I'm very glad that this something is going on to me because uh, uh, I started completely out of any world because uh, also I was better football player than soccer player than than basketball but uh, I was lucky because uh, in my in my area where I grew up in Belgrade uh, there was a school with uh, such a talented coach who who uh, realized that I have something different than these kids in my age even though I didn't know how to dribble the ball but he liked my moves and he liked my my coordination and and something that was not so usual for this age and after that, I started slowly, slowly to grow. And uh, when I when I was 16, I moved to Mega Visura, uh, and I think that was one of the best decisions that I have that I have made in my life. And then they gave me amazing opportunity to start uh, being part of senior team, which was totally, mm-hmm. totally un, unexpected for anyone at that early age. Uh, of course, there are many, uh, not many, sorry, there are few examples that they started their career. They, they have big careers at that age, like Ricky Rubio, like Luka Doncic, which they are currently way, way uh, more successful than me. But uh, it was unusual for Serbia. In Serbia, in general, you got to deserve that chance and stuff like that. But Mishko, yeah. my agent, gave me that chance and he stayed behind that. 
<clears throat> and I proved that I am able to play, and that was the first league of Serbia, not a huge, huge level, but it was way bigger than junior league. Right. And I spent four years there, and I have really, really a lot of experience in these four years, bad and good. And that's something how I, uh, I can describe my beginning of senior basketball career. I mean, I'm assuming that you developed a lot of confidence from that, from playing at, at that level with, with that team. But you also, like you said, bad and good. You had a knee injury along the way. What, what, you're 17 years old. Were you living at home at the time? Were you living on your own? No, I always, uh, until I moved to Bayern Munich, uh, I lived with my family. And mm -hmm. uh, they, were, they were definitely my be be best support, especially at that tough time. Uh, very, very hard time for me. But uh, also that's something that brought me a lot of experience, good how to, how to learn faster about life and about professional career. Uh, as you mentioned, this is something that helped me so much uh, uh, in positive way to start to play that early age. Because uh, you are you are a basketball player, and you know when you face with your generation after some kind of experience with older guys, it seems like so easy to you. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's <laughs> something that to me, uh, it's experience that I'm bringing still on the court. Because I'm 27, I'm already four years in this level, and but actually I'm playing 10 years senior basketball. It's a huge advantage for me, according uh, uh, compared to other guys who are coming maybe from college basketball or uh, some other European players. But that experience with my knee was something really uh, um, early. In one hand, it was better to happen in that age because I didn't, I was not aware of of what was going on around me, and I was so enthusiastic that okay, I told myself this is just small, small break for you. You're gonna go through this faster, and you're gonna get back better. Even people around me really, many many people gave up on me, which is fine. I mean, it's one of the hardest injuries. Not so many guys right. showed that it's possible to come back. Uh, suddenly, all these lights that I, there was, there was around, they were around me. They shut down, and I started to build from the beginning once again. And since that moment, I think uh, I get uh, I get faster, matured. I learn how to take care about my body. It wasn't something that I wanted because at that age, most of the guys are going for parties and uh, spending their best time with friends i was doing recoveries and right. all this stuff spending time how to learn to walk again how to bend my knee how to blah 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 but it, it's part it's part of the, my my career and i'm very glad that after that i came back on track that i'm now i saw the uh i'll probably mention this a couple of times during the interview but i saw the video that um the euroleague did for you when they surprised you with the mvp award and um yeah you know, i saw your sister speak and of course i thought your sister was younger than you then i found out she was older than you it yeah. must it must be better to be in the snow than it is on the basketball court <laughs> yeah it's safe you're it's safe for your look you look younger on the snow you know it's exactly. a lot of good weather exactly yeah. and then i saw your dad talk and and your sister's words kind of kind of hit me a little bit um because it it, it almost looked like she, the family supported you throughout this whole venture, this whole, since you were, you know, young, it was a family deal, not just you doing this, your mom, your dad, and everybody was behind you. And, and it felt like everybody was part of that MVP award in your family. Yes. Uh, uh, it's a big, big fact. Uh, and uh, I was also really touched uh, emotionally from that video. I saw. I, hey, man, I, I I cried this morning too, man. I teared up when I saw it this morning. I'm, I'm an old I'm an old guy. I get more sensitive as the years go on, but I gotta admit, I cried too. Yes, uh, that's that's that was uh, one of the most uh, special moments for myself, for my career and my life because uh, that's that's when you don't expect things, things are prettier, and when you don't chase them and they happen, then you really feel that pure happiness about that. And that was exactly that day when they made a surprise. I, I, I was, I always said that I was late on that meeting, and and uh, <laughs> I, I came in flip flops, and uh, it was totally unprofessional from my side. But I believe that all this uh, uh, spontaneous situation and and look from me uh, made it even better uh, to look at that surprise. Uh, but as you said about my family. 
uh, two years ago I lost my mother and that's something mm-hmm. that uh, it's a big miss for us but uh, four of us until we didn't lose her it was our base for everything like uh, we we always built from that uh, we always knew that each of us has back inside of the house of course we we live abroad uh, I live already seven years I'm living actually seven years my sister left ho- home 12 years old because of professional career but we never missed each other we always felt each other that that we got each other back and uh, of course the strongest part of that was our mother who who is one of the strongest like every mother uh, person in our lives uh, and uh, all these messages that I had I mean all these words that Tina said and father uh, touched me so much because I felt through my whole body and uh, all these memories went through my mind because um, uh, I really had a lot of situations that many people from my country or let's say from my friends didn't believe that I can achieve this and that was I mean that was fine because it was probably moments that I didn't show enough but I always knew that they believed in me and I always knew that they are there they are happy with me even I'm the worst player in the world or I'm the best they are looking at me the same way and uh, that day everything was combined and uh, one of the best feelings definitely you know, I, I read the story about you being with the national team and, and showing up in China and finding out that your mom had, had, had passed away. And and yeah, I lost my mom eight years ago. And today, you know, there's still times where I, I have that feeling of where I want to pick up the phone and call her. You know what I mean? I mean yeah. I'm sure you know what I mean. But um, I, I mean, is it to win these to win these awards, to win these championships without her around it? I mean, I know it feels good, but it, it, there's a little bit of emptiness there also, isn't there? No, definitely, definitely. And uh, not only about this award, every day, as you said, it's, uh, mm. it's that kind of feeling that uh, in one hand it pushes you to go further and in one hand it slows you down to understand that you don't need to rush anywhere, you don't need to chase something so much because life is one we cannot live 200 years and 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 achieve everything and if you don't achieve it's fine because we're gonna we're gonna stay here for a certain time and uh but i i decided in the moment when i lost her it was in china and that was the moment that i decided that i have to go through like i want to go through that and go further Mm -hmm. because i had some kind of obligations to my sister too who is older but she's a woman that uh, if she sees me weak it's not so good for her <laughs> and uh, you don't have so many choices you have to either stay cry or i don't know stuck in that moment or or push yourself and feel a cry but push yourself and let it go and uh, this is what i chose and uh, so far it's going okay she said she said something in in her statement to you that you know mom's looking down upon us and and i mean that that's what made me tear up because I always thought the same thing. You know, my dad passed away and I was still playing. I always felt like they're there watching no matter what, man. So you, even like, even on your bad days, you got to be good because your parents are watching no matter where they're at. Yes. Yes. This phrase for me always sound like people talk too much when I was younger. Cause, uh, I always ask myself, what does it mean they watch, they are watching on us because they are gone. But when you, when you experience that, uh, it starts to be different because that energy and and uh, how can I say that uh, relationship that you have through all your life with these people, these persons, is something that can disappear. Nobody can take away that. That's why I always say, even we were separated during there, she was alive. I never felt uh, that I missed her because she was she was always there by mm-hmm. phone. She was always connected to us. But now when she's physically not here uh, I always feel her somewhere and I always feel her that is there and it's it's like that it's it's not a better way to describe than this yeah I know I, I'm I know exactly what you're saying man I just want I want everybody else to feel that and know what you're going through it's hard I used to say a prayer to my father before every game I'd walk into the shower wherever the shower was say my little quick prayer and talk to my talk to my dad before I went out and played so they were always there with us and we know that Exactly. A, exactly. That's, that's yes. You you went from 
Yeah, unfortunately it is. And it's gonna happen yes. to all of us. But you went from Mega, where you started playing well, you decided to take your your talents to Germany, as as LeBron said back in the days, you know, take, I'm taking my talents to Miami. Um, but it didn't go so well for you in Germany. Talk to me about yes. that. Yes, that stage for me of my career uh, was another big experience for me uh, in many ways. The most important uh, was that uh, I realized what professional life means, uh, what uh, relationship between professionals means. Uh, there is not so many emotions. Uh, it's a pretty strict rules between people, uh, especially with your, let's say, rival on the position. Even I understand that if you build chemistry that let's say we have now in FS, it's always the best way to, to achieve something. But I came from Mega, Mega Visura where we were all 19, 18 years born kids and we were friends, we were having good time. And then suddenly I'm roommate with some guy who is 30, 32. I was still 19, uh, turning uh, 20. Uh, and uh, that that's something that I, I realized first. And uh, one of the things that uh, was very important about that, from the paper, on the paper, it looked like the best option for me. Uh, mm -hmm. When I made the decision to to move from Mega, I was looking like a, for the full package, uh, which means I knew that I was young, uh, but I kind of felt that I'm ready to to move forward for the level. Let's say that was a Euroleague level, which was big, big step forward for, for me. But I believed that I was ready. I was ready not maybe to be the main guy, but I felt that I was ready with my talent and with my body because I was, I was enough strong in that moment for that level and, and, and enough experience that I can, I can be there. But unfortunately, the things didn't, went, didn't go well. Uh, there was a, our Serbian coach, uh, Svetislav Pesic, who, who wanted me two years before that in Red Star too. And we kind of already built some kind of relationship that I felt it's enough to, to, to have trust in him. Uh, and then uh, we really did have a, a successful season as a team. I, I, I show in some games that I have that talent, I have that potential that I am capable of doing good things, but it was not consistent because, I, of course, I was very young. Uh, and I think I couldn't uh, build bigger and better relationship with coach because there was there was something that we missed. We we didn't click. Uh, he had that mindset that uh, he 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 wanted me to he wanted to make out of me new player like new profile of Vasa Mitic. And uh, I, I I was trying I was trying because I had trust in him and I believe that he is doing the best for me. But it didn't go well. It really mm -hmm. didn't go well because. Just some things didn't work well because we tried, and then at one point it looked like we we with all this trying we can't fit. We can't fit. We we started even to have some some uh, uh, um, situations that we don't understand each other. We oh, both of us are Serbians uh, with strong <laughs> characters. Uh, he was he is older. He could be my grandfather, and so he looked at me that way too. Like he wanted to to be a mentor to me. Mm -hmm. And all this positive uh, attitude from him was good on the paper, but in the reality was not so good. And uh, it was useful. It was useful because uh, I always say everything is happening with a reason. That was something that I learned uh, out of it from from that so much. Uh, the relationship with coaches after that for me was much easier because, you know, when you come 20 years old, you want to do everything to be a good student. And uh, at the end of the day, Good students are not making decisions uh, on the court. Good students are good parts of the team. But if you want to be a leader, if you want to be something bigger <laughs> than that, you have to you have to take responsibility. And after that, I started doing that more and more. You you kind of got kicked around there from Germany. Then you went back to your hometown to Shavena Vezda. Then eventually they let you go. You were loaned back to Shavena Vezda. And then they let you go to Tofas. You went to Turkey. Was there a moment in those three years, even though it was you saying that now you look back on it as a growing moment uh, to learn and to grow, but was there a moment there where you started to stop believing in yourself, losing confidence in yourself? Because you made, you know, you made that step that you've already thought about in your mind to go to the next level and it didn't go good. Did you lose confidence in yourself? 
uh, honestly, uh, I never doubt about myself because I was always, I was the first person uh, always that I was so uh, honest to myself. Uh, starting from that signing with Bayern, uh, there was a, a stories around me that after two years I'm gonna go to NBA. This is my time, but I knew that I wasn't ready for NBA first at that moment. Then second, uh, uh, one very important thing for me was because uh, when I was younger, there was a big, big boost around me. Uh, really, I was really, really big star in my age. Uh, people were talking about me. I was best uh, point guard in under-19 World Cup, uh, MVP of National Cup, in, in uh, youngest ever. It was many, many positive stories. But I always felt that this is something that there is something that I missed. And what I've missed was actually uh, uh, consistency. I missed uh, in. in being professional on that level because uh, you need to get slowly steps uh, and make small steps not so big to to be to feel comfortable when you are young and the most important thing why what i understood is that we have that unfortunately bad environment in serbia because if you didn't achieve not something until 20 years old that means that you are done that you are done you can you can reach nothing else you are finished uh, and that's something that i face the most after experience with Bayern Munich and that's something that really hurts me because you know I, I, I met people in the on the streets and they suddenly look at me like I'm the worst player uh, they look at coaches uh, all this uh, basketball world uh, journalists uh, but I believe that 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 time family was also something very very important for me uh, that always they told me that this is your way of becoming something that you're going to become we will see what's going to be but don't don't doubt on yourself. And uh, that that move to Red Star in the, in the middle of the season was actually my first serious decision. Because uh, I said, uh, I mean, people can talk about me that I'm talent, but until I don't, I don't play, it right. doesn't mean nothing. And I felt a little bit shy because uh, before Bayern, I had uh, many offers from Red Star coach Dan Radonjic. And I made decision to don't sign for him, and then suddenly I'm going <laughs> back to him. So I felt like I'm doing bad, bad things uh, to myself because I was a, uh, I was not uh, maybe uh, fair to him because I decided to go to, to Bayern. But at the same time, I said this is it. I have to make that decision. The situation for me was perfect because they, they got uh, Marcus Williams left, and there was a spot for backup point guard. Uh, in that moment, Stefan Jovic was playing amazing. So we, I also knew him from national team. And from this point of view, I'm very, very thankful to Dan Radonjic that he gave me that opportunity because I had really tough moments in the Red Star because it was a lot of pressure from the fans. But a very successful year. Uh, some very, very good games, solid games that gave me back that confidence to believe that I'm still capable of doing things because I was just 22. And that moment, but I felt like I'm the oldest guy right. in the Europe one. And then that was the moment that actually I realized now everything next will be absolutely my decision. And that's how everything else. Yeah, you know, because I'm looking at all your stuff and now you go to Zalgiris and you, it was a great year you had in, in Kaunas. It was, it was an amazing season for the team, for the club, for, for everybody there. But even then, that, that incredible, you're only 24 years old at that point, but it does seem like you've been around forever. <laughs> we, you, and yeah. I, you and I were discussing this before we, we started recording that everybody always, always thought you were maybe like five or six years older than you really were. But when you look at the time in Zalgiris, I'm like, man, he's 24, but it seems like he's been around for a long time. Yes, yes. There was a small step uh, that I like always to mention. It was not small, uh, very, very big. Maybe the most important for me is actually Tofaş Bursa uh, in Turkey after Red Star. Uh, that experience for me meant so much uh, privately and, and professionally because uh, I met one of the, men, the most most important person and best friends in my life. It's coach Orkun Ene, who is currently uh, head coach of national team Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, he gave me a chance. He gave me a chance. Uh, I, I put all my past on the side when I signed there and I started to build my my style of basketball that I'm playing now in that, that club. 
I started to shoot the ball. He pushed me to shoot the ball. He started. Uh, he forced me to to be a more scorer because I was always a very good passer and most or more more oriented passer than scorer. And he realized that I have that that the potential. I really worked a lot these uh, these three years before I signed there, and he gave me that freedom that I deserved. And with him, that year was very very special. Uh, experience in Turkish league that year was amazing because uh, Turkish league that year had four Euroleague teams. Mm-hmm. And every game was for me was special. At the end, we reached playoff. I had a great season, and finally, I felt again, as you said, I was just 23, but I felt again uh, full of energy. And I want, I, I didn't let anybody after that tell me that I'm not good enough. I didn't care really. And since that moment till now, and probably till I die, nobody will be able to tell me that I'm not good enough because that's me. That's the best version of me. I'm. Dedicate to everything I do and very, very important step for me. And yeah. then, as you said, they, 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 they ain't going to tell you that now, that's for sure. And even, <laughs> even, if, even if they did, it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, no one's going to tell you that you're not that yeah, much, yeah. except after this season. Yes, um, I mean, this, all these uh, personal and, and team uh, achievements that I've made this season, uh, it's something that uh, most of the guys that uh, are around me and friends, they were telling, they told me like, oh, now it's time to show them all what what they made in their life as mistakes. But no, that's not me. I always said all this experience from people that didn't believe maybe at the moment in me was useful for me. And I'm thankful mm-hmm. for them that they show me. And they show me that something is good and something is not good for me. And that's how I built. My, my personality, and uh, I never do that. I am always happy with my current situation, and I just look forward. And that's 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 also that's also good. Maybe for some kids that will listen to this interview to understand that there is no time to 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 look at back and and tell people they were wrong. No, it's it's past. We gotta move forward. It's it's so hard to keep that mentality though, too, because like you said, you went through that time where everybody told you how good you were. And I've I've seen, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of players along the way that never made it, that were told at a very young age how good they were. And that goes sometimes that goes into their heads the wrong way and and, and you develop a, a a lack of intensity, a lack of like ability to work harder and to get better because everybody's feeding you like you're so good you're so good you're so good yes. why do i need to get better and, and it doesn't seem yeah. like you that doesn't seem like you went down that road you went down the other road you wanted to keep getting better yes exactly uh i i, I always say something to some younger players they are calling me now and i don't like to sound like big big talker because uh you, you don't want to sound like an old sound- man like me <laughs> no, no, no. Like you know, like I don't want to give so much advice. now suddenly I'm so smart. Suddenly I have so much experience, and then I will call people and give some sessions and uh, talking to them what they should supposed to do. No, I'm not that. Kind. But whoever calls me for some advice, I always say one of the main things that led me through the career was that nobody could took away from me work ethic, and I always work like uh, and. Uh, now I read in the Instagram that let's say Damian Lillard says, "If you beat yourself without expect uh, without ex- uh, expectators uh, spectators, sorry, then you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be also with spectators." And that's something that was also my my motto when I was young. I always worked, and I never asked somebody to tell me that or to push me to work. And yeah. uh, that's something that always gave me extra credit. Uh, somehow. The person who who should see that will see that, but I never do did it because of them. I always did it because of myself, and I always uh, starting from body, uh, weightlifting, uh, my body uh, shape that is getting always better and better. And I think this is one of the biggest advantage of my position that I, I improved all these years to be strong, to be fast with my size for Euroleague standard. I'm saying, then my shots. They are my dribbling. All these small details are combined are giving me this what I'm making today. And uh, it's been a long journey, like seven, seven, eight years I'm doing that. And uh, this is still inside of me. I'm still very, very hungry, really. Like uh, all these achievements just uh, are part of this long journey that I hope will last longer than, than maybe I expect. Because if I stay healthy and uh, it stays with me too. Man, you're still only 27, man. It's crazy. Yes. <laughs> it's yes, crazy. Yes. I, I, I want to 
just talk about Zalgiris real quick because it was your first full experience with Euro League the whole season, and you guys, it was the best year to be there in Zalgiris. And on top of it, you guys get to the final four in your country. You, yes, you, yes. You, it you is know, amazing. I mean, how, how it was an unbelievable final four with you guys even winning third place and celebrating like you won the title. But for you, that had to be crazy because with everything that you've already gone through, and you, I was glad that you explained the whole TOFUS thing too, because I didn't get much information about TOFUS. Um, and now you're in the final four in Zalgirdas. How, how like life changing was that for you to be in a final four with Zalgirdas Kaunas, one of the best basketball clubs in Europe? Yeah, uh, that was the second, second decision that I made on my own because uh, when I finished season with Tofas, finally I felt happy with coach, with system and everything. And they got wild card to play Euro Cup. For me, it was more than enough to, to stay there. And uh, they really believed in me. But then I spoke to also with my coach, Anne, and I told him that I have that offer from, from Zagiris. I also had some other offer from Euro but I didn't want to make so big step forward because I felt that I need that small step, I mean, which means small, like not so big club, uh, good organization to enter EuroLeague to be again visible for these teams and visible for the coaches from that from that league. And suddenly, Zagiri started to be interested in, in me and uh, show that interest. And um, I also realized that Leo Westerman played before me and he's like a big guard. He proved his game a lot with Charas. And I saw that chance as a perfect, perfect spot for me to, to, to improve my career and make next step. And that was one of the smartest decisions for me that I made. Because uh, uh, it didn't look so, so, fam so uh, fabulous from the outside, going to Zagiris, uh, going to the club that they cannot, let's say, pay so much. But all these things were not important for me. For me, it was only important to improve my game and be on the court on the higher level that I was at that. And it really happened like that. It wasn't easy here. It wasn't really easy here for me because uh, Sharas is, uh, <laughs> is a very, very demanding coach, and but very, very, very useful. Uh, I always like to say as a comparison that that year was for me like I played five, six years in EuroLeague level. Because the way Sharas teach players, I believe also Kevin Pangos told you similar, the way he teach players, uh, the way he treat players uh, on the court uh, with the details, with the consistent detail, uh, paying attention on details, especially for the point guards, it was amazing, uh, amazing experience for me that I'm, I'm, very, I'm using so much in, in these years after him. And that and and that'll those are things because I learned a lot of that from Obradovic, that of course is your your country mate. And, uh, and yeah, there are times where I just hated Selko, you know, it's just like, God, he's just so, it's so difficult to play for him. But he taught me so much about being a professional, about being a person, about being a human being, because Selko was, Selko, and I don't know how Sardis is, but I imagine how he is off the court. But I mean, they're, they're just normal people off the court. They're, when they get inside those four lines, they become like, they become possessed with basketball. And then yes. outside uh, those four yeah. lines, they're 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 like they're just normal people, you know. And, and they teach you yes. so much about life. Yes, exactly. Uh, one one important thing uh, out of ten that I can really say about Sharas at least uh, was that for him as a extremely talented player that was one of my idols when I was young and I watched him so much was very, very important to be part of Jelko's system. So now as a coach, mm -hmm. he used that very, very well. And uh, I can tell that he has a very, very similar things uh, like Jelko. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> energy-wise, uh, uh, competitiveness that he didn't even miss as a player, but I think he got it additionally with Jelko. Uh, his approach as a coach, the pay, uh, the way he developed season, the way he developed teams, the way the, that he developed players, habits, all this comes, I think, uh, as a coach part of Jeko. And uh, he's really modern in his modern version of Jeko, I would say, because he played not so long time ago. He understands better players, better their uh, strengths and their weakness. 
And uh, this is, let's say, one very important thing. Second very important thing is that the way he talks, it's very hard to listen all year long, uh, the way he acts too. But if you put that away, you can really understand that he's always 99% right with mm -hmm. the advice. Uh, he literally reads the game so many steps ad, uh, in advance. Uh, third very important thing for me is that he was a point guard. You know, he really uh, demanded from me to be a leader on the court. It doesn't matter if you are scoring 20 or zero, you have to be a leader. You have to insist on that, that players can trust you. It's from small details, being vocal, being, uh, being there for them when they are not so safe, uh, being being invisible when the others are visible, being visible where the others are invisible. Um, then really specific things about the game, he really insists on that. For, uh, for me and Kevin, I, I would say the most, to improve these ha bad habits from the past. And uh, I, I really, really learned. And I think that year for me was really useful because I really pay attention on every single day what he wants from me and I really learned and when I left him it was one of the things that I felt that okay I learned so much I can stay one more year with him because uh, I had that option the contract but I wanted to leave to show what I learned because it was still fragile because I was not the best player in the, that moment in the team but I felt that I learned the best way I could from him and then after that I did it in, in FS I think yeah but but that that's you seem to be making the right moves no matter where you go um even if even if it's up to you to make that move the right move you know because everybody makes a decision for whatever it is but it's up to you to make that decision the correct decision right, right. but you you after that year was all geared as you play a great year early you have a final four everything's going pretty good and what makes you decide to go to a team that is seven and twenty-three, and in the last place of the Euroleague the season before. That that to me, looking back on it now, is not it's not copacetic with what you're telling me. Whether you know you've made all your, these calculated decisions. What did you know, or who talked you into going to this team beforehand? Uh, if we talk about making decisions, there is one part of the of of. of uh, how can I say, of, of small puzzles that are making that decision look as one, uh, that I always uh, keep it for myself. And that's, uh, okay, you put things on the table, you count on them, there, there are logical things. But there are always one part that you can't control. This is life. And that's part that really gives me always to be relaxed. Whenever I make a decision, I'm going 100% to that decision. Uh, of course, if you talk about decision going to FS after a season with Jagiris, it, that at the first moment it didn't look to me at all logical. <laughs> uh, I I had seven days to to think because uh, it was a quick decision, let's say. But then I I I, I told myself if I came to Jagiris and if I came to Tofash, and all these stories in the beginning of the year was not so good to me for me. There was no any guarantees that I will be even in Tofash. I, I was second point guard when I signed, and then I became first. Even in the Jagiris, I was a backup point guard, and I became a combo guard with with Kevin together. So what does it mean? Let's put all these logical things on the side, which are, but with FS was there were so many <laughs> really bad, bad logical, <laughs> bad logical things to don't go there. And let's 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 make the decision, and after that, let's see what's gonna happen. And that's something that gave me biggest freedom, because uh, after that signing, I went to Belgrade, and uh, people already start to talk about me better and better because I had good season with Sharas. Uh, they kind of expected me maybe to go to Jelko or to some kind of similar coach, or to stay there, or to go to some traditional European club that builds around young players. And then suddenly I signed for FS completely out of nowhere. <laughs> and there, there was a story that uh, people really didn't believe that I can make something good out of it. And also in FS, I signed as a backup of La Larkin and, and Bobois. So there was nothing safe, really. Like it was, it was even better to stay for sure in, in Jagir. But one more important thing for me was that when I look at this guy, Sharas, 
and my, because I really know his career well, I followed him very well. And I remember his decision to go from Barca to Maccabi. Uh, I felt that I'm not, I'm not Sharas, I'm not Sharas, I'm not uh, as good as he. Uh, he was in his prime. I'm just saying that I felt something that he made on his own, and he went somewhere completely new after best season. In, I mean, after winning championship with Barca, and he made the history. And uh, he made it because. He didn't think twice. He made decision, and he was he believed in that in, in that decision, and that was small also motivation for me to prove to myself that I'm capable maybe of doing something different that people expect from me to go out of that comfort zone that people always like to have, and that that's how I I made it. And after that, really after even after first season that we won second place, Euro, people were still talking, ah, oh, this was your lucky season, blah blah blah. But then. Everything else was proven them wrong. That that you you get to Ephesus and <clears throat> they signed the team, and that was that was a you know that turned out to be a good decision because as the season went on, you and Shane kind of developed the chemistry. Um, the team developed the chemistry throughout the season, and and talk to me about that final four in Victoria. It was a great season for you guys. Almost went from last to first, and. And that final four was was a difficult one because you had a good semifinal game, but you didn't have a good final game. And did you take that with you? I mean, you know, you I think you were two for nine from three, but you just couldn't get your you were taking good shots in that game. I remember seeing you had good looks at the basket, but <clears throat> you just couldn't get it to, to fall. How tough of a game was that for you personally in a in a final four at a championship game? It was very tough, but uh, very useful because after that experience with uh, Zagiris in the final four in Belgrade, I learned a lot because I really played similar uh, semi final like I played final in Basconi. I was really nervous. I really wanted to be a, a main guy, um, make, uh, a decision maker, and it didn't go well because you, you have to learn this is just another game. You have to learn that you have to get yourself uh, into the game easier than forcing something and the game will come back to you. And uh, with the experience from Belgrade, I played much, much better semi-final against Fenerbahce in Basconia because I was really calm on the court. Mm -hmm. I made very good decision at the moment and uh, we really played well. Shane also played amazing. Uh, but for the final game, I think I made a similar mistake like in Belgrade. I wanted, I wanted as soon as possible to get myself into the game with shots that uh, I believe in my shot, but um, I don't like to play in the game, really. I don't like to, I, uh, really, I don't play any game. I just play the game that it, it, it comes to me. Like, if, I, if I'm if i open, I shoot. If I'm not open, I beat. If I'm close with two players, I, I pass. And that's how I think I'm the most dangerous player on the court, because I'm unpredictable. As soon as I start to make up my mind, it seems for defense easier to, to win my game. Mm -hmm. But in the final, I think, I make up my mind. Uh, that's the sentence that I, I've heard so many times from Sharas. Don't make up your mind. And uh, uh, I, I just shoot it by force, you know, like I forced these shots unnecessarily, even we were in the game, but I didn't I didn't play well that game so much as, as I want. And after that experience, it was very, very useful that final game for me to play the way I played my last final four. How... The I mean, it just makes you hungry to to come back after like, we talk about that emptiness. And this time it was an empty feeling without the without the medal in your hand, as you said. And and now you you have the hunger to come back and do it all over again. But it's such a long journey to start from the beginning and go through the whole season. You guys did it twenty four and four before the season was ended by COVID. Where were you? Where were you the day? Because I I think it was like game day. I was I was at a hotel in Valencia. Madrid. You were Valencia. in Valencia. No, we played was, against Valencia here, yes. Ah, there, okay. I was I was in the Savannah Vezda's hotel doing a podcast with the team. And when I my, my phone kept buzzing and I'm like, oh man, I'm like something's not good. <laughs> yes. How, how how hard is that at 24 and 4 years to dominate the league? You you you're you're doing exactly what every team wants to do after losing a final four. Uh, yes. Uh, first, for me, very important thing was that uh, when, before Final Four in Basconia, uh, there were some rumors that I want to that I supposed to leave the club, and uh, 
there were some good offers for me to 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 go out of, uh, from FS to leave FS, but I made my again on my own decision to stay because uh, I felt that first time I'm happy, really happy uh, being part of one team and they had trust in me and I deserve that and coach wanted me to stay. And that that summertime after the first season, I've heard so many stories, as I said, that we we were lucky. We, we had a so good season, unexpected season. Uh, and then that second season was actually uh, a proof that we, we, we really have that quality. Mm-hmm. We, we were playing like crazy. And the uh, feeling was great because uh, I always like to say that the way we play as a team, it's not easy to build in any team because we have right. so much talent. And the personal characters of the players are very good. We have personal awareness of mistakes, personal awareness of decisions, good or bad. So you don't need to spend so much time as a coach to teach the guys what is good or not good. And each player is motivated for himself, uh, whether on defensive part of the game or offensive. And all this combined with sacrificing your ego, we really build something that it's hard to, to beat. I'm not saying that we are unbeatable or the best ever, just saying that it's hard, especially when we have healthy players, it's hard to handle us because we have we can play both ways. And in that second season, we showed that really well. Shane had amazing season. My season was also crazy good for not, for me personally because it was the best season ever so uh, uh, at that moment. And all together looked so well from the outside. And then this COVID happened, but I really didn't I really didn't feel uh, didn't feel bad because it was much bigger situation than just a game, yeah. just a season. I accepted. At that moment mm-hmm. that this happened, I accepted. I didn't think twice at all after that. I believe that uh, our coach uh, uh, mentioned so many, many, so many times that we, we got, uh, they stole this trophy from us. But uh, I just always say that I cannot agree with him because we never know what could happen. Right. It was still two, three months to play. You can get so many injuries or you just can't have a bad day in the final four so there was no any guarantee that we would win we were in the best shape and i would i would say better than this year we were better than this year last year uh of course of the whole season but i i forgot it and uh that that constant uh uh reminding ourselves that we got stolen uh, stolen that trophy on the year before was really big pressure from us this season. And at the moment when we finally understand that nobody stole nothing from us, that it was <laughs> something that just happened, I think we finally felt, felt that fresh air and we started to play well. Where where the motivation come from this season then? Because, you know, the loss to the Final Four was almost, it's, it's never forgotten about. You'll always remember that you're, but my my curse is I always remember my bad games and the games that I lost more than I remember the the championships. But but you know, it's a year gone now. It's a, that that's way beyond. No one's ever lived this before. No one's ever lived the pandemic before either. So it, yeah. it was you know. It, so where does the motivation come from? Because is it is it two years of motivation or is it like I'm, we're just starting over again? And and how did you keep the team together? That's the crazy part. So many changes were being made all over the Euroleague during that summer and during the quarantine that you guys stayed together. Was it something that you guys talked about? Uh, I, I'm a very good friend with Kruno Simon uh, in my private life, and we are really, really close friends. You, but, you, know, uh, you, know, you, know, you know I love you. I love you. I love Shane. I love everybody. But you guys don't win a title without him, right? You know that. Yes, exactly. Okay. We all okay. say that. Don't worry. We are aware. Okay, good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not Hopefully, the only one that knows. He's amazing guy. He's unique, unique, unique talent, unique person, it's, unique character, really. Uh, if you play with man. him, you can feel that better off the court than on the court. If if I if we talk about motivation, I, I always like to say that basketball is team sport, but at the same time individual sport. Because you gotta you gotta keep your motivation first of all inside of yourself. And I never miss that because I always go day by day. That is mm-hmm. what can I what I can say about me. About others, I don't know. Maybe some guys had that motivation, like unfinished job or these phrases that I don't believe so much. But uh, <laughs> we really had a slow start. We really had a slow start yeah. because we had a pandemic problem with a uh, lot of coronaviruses. Uh, Shane came late. Uh, and uh, I said all these three years that 
FS is not a team, and I'm one of the big parts of the team, and I can tell this with confidence. If we calculate in the, in the future so much, we can play like that. We are not the team that have such a strong system that can cover uh, important players with some maybe uh, not same level player from the team, so he can play the same way. No, we need to have 12 players ready. We need to have play, 12 players healthy. And like that, we are dangerous. And that's what we experienced in these three, uh, first three months. We were on 11th spot. We, we, we looked uh, lost on the court. We always miss someone. We always look at each other like somebody is guilty. And actually, the team was the same. And uh, with knowing that we are the same, that there's the same goal, same system, we, we finally realized after that CSKA game that, come on, guys, let's, let's wake up and let's, let's trust each other. Let's trust each other. Let's believe that we can really make that possible, not maybe trophy because it was far at that moment, but still believe that we are, we are the same level of the team. All, all you guys talk about that CSKA game the, um, in the Final Four, that's all you guys talked about, like the moment of the season was a CSKA game. What was there... Was it just a was it just a, a feeling that came upon you guys, or was it a group thing where you guys walked in the locker room like, "Fellas, we're back. Let's do this." Uh, the game that I'm talking about is actually Ceska lost uh, right. in Moscow. Uh, uh, it, that's the moment that we we escalate to the to the last limits of, of, of bad energy, uh, and and uh, even coach who 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 is pretty confident person, and he has that kind of uh, even interviews that he likes to say we're gonna win, we're gonna win. Even he <laughs> he was so nervous these three months, uh, these three months because uh, he felt that he's missing always someone that uh, we are not good enough. And he still believed in us, but he got he he went too far with uh, with his nervousness about team and 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 in that game when we lost thirty points when they really destroyed us, he finally understood that okay guys. We got to take a deep breath and understand everything is the same. We are the same team. We have the same roster. We have the same system. We got to stop overthinking. We got to stop calculate where is the Cologne, where is the Final Four. Let's just start going game by game. And uh, we had also open meeting when where everybody could say whatever uh, they think. And uh, finally, we, we felt that it's easier energy. You know, it's lighter. You know, we we. we we put away some pressure from our back. And then after that, we really had an amazing run. Uh, we had an amazing run with, I don't know how many games we won in the consecutive uh, Turkish League and EuroLeague. And game by game, we started to build that confidence back. And then we had a chance to face Ceska once again in, the, in our home court. And that game was a, once again positive. Uh, proven moment for us that we are good and we are you won, you, won, you won by 30 of course it was positive <laughs> yes yes we won by 30 and Barca game in Barcelona I, that's, was important. that's the game that's I a key think. moment yeah. yes yes because they yeah. were very good they were killing people they were killing teams they were so confident uh, the way they played defense it was almost yeah. impossible to solve their defense but we went there with full with belief and uh, I always like to say that when you are humble and when you are on the ground and uh, patient, good things can happen, really. If you are so arrogant and you want to achieve things and every, when you achieve them, you want to show them all that you are the best, very fast life shows you that things are changing things and moving turn. around. Well, and that's that what happened to us in that game, too. We were, we were hungry and, and we were building yeah. from the first minute. You guys scored 88 points in that game against one of the best defenses in the league at that point. But I, I want to go to exactly because of what you just said about how things turn around so quickly. Games three, four, and five in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we were dominating the, those first two games and people were counting already on us in Final Four, but these, Wait, these let me let me ask you years. let me ask you a sorry, quick question. Sorry. I I know this isn't I know this is impossible, but it's just kind of like a, a um, one of my thoughts. I, I was doing the game. I was in the arena with you guys, and you're up by twenty something in the third quarter. And I'm thinking you guys are already like making dinner plans in, in Istanbul for the next night, you know, and, and because it's over. I mean, the game's over, the series is over, and you guys are. I'm already talking about you guys punching your tickets to the Final Four. What the hell happened? What, yes. 
The, and yeah. you can't tell you can't tell me there was an overconfidence because everybody told me there's an overconfidence, and that's over overconfidence only happens one game, not three games. Yeah. Yes. Uh, even fifth game, I would I would come back when the fifth game was not overconfident. Uh, fifth game was the real battle. Fifth no, game course, was the yeah. real battle because they they got extra confidence in the uh, in the previous two games. Uh, but for the third game, we played against Real Madrid. Very, very good team. Ten years together with same coach, and we really expected their answer with a different, uh, different type of defense. With uh, they have that uh, Spanish player that have the Spanish player they have that mindset that they they really have extra confidence in their home court mm. uh, games, and of course with the experienced player like Liu, like uh, Rudy, uh, they they show that in those two games with all others. Don't take me wrong. But when we lost that uh, third game, I felt small emptiness because uh, <laughs> it's all about emptiness. But uh, uh, I felt that we needed, we needed, and I felt that we are we are better. But this is the thing that can be useful for the final four. This is the thing you can be very useful for us to 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 be patient 40 minutes, and when the the referee blow the whistle in the last second, then you can relax yourself. As you said, we we already finish our game in the 35th minute and then suddenly we'll blow everything. What, 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 was, what was the mood like in the hotel that night? In the dinner? Ah, it was, it was, it was strange. Like, after first game, not so, not so bad mood because we knew that we have another chance. So we, but the, 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 the feeling was that we are lost. We we started to overthink about their defense. We started to overthink about their matchups, uh, about uh, that they are playing really same rhythm all year, all game, and suddenly they break you, even if you're up 20 points. So after second uh, loss in Madrid, uh, I felt first time from my, let's say from the staff and everybody that feeling of fear, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, me, I was okay. Me and Krono, because we spent all night together, we were okay just because we experienced very, very similar uh, things uh, in Barca uh, a playoff series two, year, two years before uh, that we played 2-2 and then we came right. back with the fifth game. We, uh, fifth game to play at home, it's very, very big advantage. It's really a uh, very big advantage because uh, if you, somebody not, gives you... If somebody not, gives you... It's not the same now as it used to be with fans. Sure, it's not the sure, same sure. big but advantage. We had small fans. We had small fans, and it was yeah. different because in Madrid it was totally crazy, empty, completely. Yeah. Gym. You can you can hear the breath of the people, and <laughs> and it was easy for Lasso to control his defense because he was telling everyone what to do yeah, so yeah. correctly. In Istanbul, we ca we really had a uh, little bit louder uh, atmosphere than that, and also it's your home court that you practice every day. It's better. So if somebody gives you uh, before the season that opportunity to play fifth game at home, probably most of the teams would take it. Of course. Of uh, course. But the moment of fifth game was not so easy because we knew that they have that experience, so they know how to play for results. It's not like right. new team; they really know how to slow down the game. Uh, they really know how to don't give up, even they are uh, losing or they're winning. They are playing till the end, and the game was one of the best games that I've experienced. And after that, when I when I watched, I really enjoyed because the game was really really good to to watch. It was it was a good game. It was, it was a great fifth game, you know, in the playoffs. Yes. Yes. Um, the, but then this in the semifinal game. Now I'm taking you now to Cologne, and in the semifinal game against Jessica, the same thing happens. You guys take the lead, you blow the lead, and and you know. As I'm doing this this podcast and I'm preparing over the last couple of days, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, if if Will Kleiber makes that three, all right, think about everything that you would you, make a joke of me without. <laughs> <laughs> no, you and I wouldn't be here talking right now. That's for sure. That's number one. Yes. Maybe big, Kleiber will be here. Yeah, exactly. I said the big story would be they would be maybe back to back champions, and Will Kleiber might be back to back MVP. You know, but yes. uh, and that's kind of what we've talked about throughout this whole interview is the fact that it, it doesn't take much, man. It doesn't take much to change destiny and to change yes. a, a, somebody's yes. career, future. 
So, I mean, it's exactly. so fragile sometimes. It's so fragile. It's fragile. It's, fra it's fragile. And if you are, uh, if you take that uh, in positive way, it can really give you relaxed feeling because you can't predict nothing in life. Really, it's so hard to predict any any situation, not only on basketball court, even in the, in the private life. And this is what really makes me feel relaxed those three minutes on the bench when I got this fifth foul because otherwise I would probably start to, to kill people over there because <laughs> I'm not on the court. But no, I just said this is this is it. I'm on I'm out. Uh and and uh, that's how I looked at this at that at the, the, that scenario. But it wasn't easy because we knew how good we played uh, these 35 minutes and uh but the thing that we knew is that Ceska will never give up. Like the two right. also will never give up. The, they will ha they will have to find someone to explode that game, and that was Clyburn. He really scored so many tough shots. Uh, but at the end, I always like to say this is uh, uh, one nice lesson from Sharas too. No matter how much you win, it's about to win. You know, like uh, one or twenty, it's same thing. And uh, we won it. We won it. Uh, we had amazing the run from Rodrigo Bobois at the end, who, who has amazing talent. I'm so happy for him that he's playing well, but I think he's capable of better, better things. He took, took the game over and Shane together with him. It shows once again our real potential that we can close the game with missing so many guys. And uh, uh, unbelievable feeling when he missed this three. Unbelievable. Yeah, if 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 that ball was in your hands at the end of the game and the situation was turned around, do you go to the basket or do you shoot the three? I read one time uh, Kobe Bryant interview, uh, and he always said on the game shot decision or a winning shot decision, he never go to the basket because uh, it's never been called foul, never. Mm -hmm. uh, people will punch you, so I would always take shot. I would mm -hmm. always take shot, but he took I think from long distance. Yeah, in my opinion, in my opinion, he took from the long distance. But and one thing that I believe is that he make up his mind before the shot how he gonna take the shot, because uh, he went there and the guy was on three point line who guarded him. I don't remember who, so he could get closer, like he could get one meter closer to take maybe better right. shots. But I think he forced himself before he went on the court to take that difficult shot, and at the end it could go in. Yeah, exactly. The, the 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 final game. Now now you're playing against Sardis. You, I mean, it, I mean, this is kind of bittersweet. Yeah, it's this crazy. Is crazy that, stuff, that yeah. You're playing a final. I'm I'm sure you don't feel bad about beating them. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not good. No, not at all. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know what? I knew you guys were going to win that game when you oh. started when you started the game from behind. I was like, this yes. is the best. This is the best thing yeah. that could possibly happen to this team because if they yes, get up by yes. twenty, they they might blow it again. Yes, but, yes. But it sounds crazy that people always like to lead the game, but for us, that game was exactly as you said, a better way to start. Even we were down by ten in the beginning. Uh, it was a big lead from Barca, twenty-five, fifteen, that we we really couldn't score. But then we found a big. Uh, we found very good five. Uh, players on the court with Tibor on the five, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Shane, uh, Rodrigue and Kruno and Moerman. So they catch that lead. And then uh, if, if I'm looking from my perspective playing that game, uh, I started slow, but uh, the game before I really was exhausted with Ceska at the end of the game. So I was fine with that slow start. And then I, I had more energy for the second half that we really played, really played good. Was there any time in that first half, because you, you scored one field goal, Shane didn't score any. Shane kind of kept you guys in the game by getting fouled and getting to the line. Um, but was there any time in that, while you're on the bench in that first half, where you you started thinking about Victoria, the bad final game? Did it, did it no. pop up in your head? No, no, really, really, no. I, I, I believe you, I believe you, because you always tell me the truth. You're the one that told me, like, after the game, the chess game, but, man, I was exhausted. I couldn't do it anymore. Yes, so yes, I believe yes. you. You tell me no, I actually do believe you. Yes, yes, they, uh, I'm always on. I'm always honest, really, and trying to keep myself always honest, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I was on the half uh, half time in the locker room. I didn't uh, even know what was the score. I didn't know who is up or are we up or down. Uh, and in the second half, when I stepped back on the court, uh, I mean, in the halftime, people came to me a little bit and say, come on, be aggressive, don't worry, everything will come. I was like, I'm okay. 
I'm okay to to score six and win the title. And that's something mm -hmm. that gave me uh, peace, peace on the court. And uh, as you said, Shane really kept us alive in that first half. It's uh, we drawing these fouls and scoring all these free throws. And he is the guy who really, if he has momentum, can destroy you. And these free throws help him too to be to feel felt that ball to to feel more dangerous. And then in the second half. I really felt the game very, very well. And uh, from the moment that we started to build on defense, because we stopped them so well. I mean, they didn't score any easy bucket in the second half. Right. We we built on that and, and with some extra crazy shots. Uh, even when I watched the game after uh, by myself, I, I remember when I scored that three from the right dribbling, it was 69-69. <laughs> I felt like we are up 10. We are yeah. <laughs> we are five, but actually it was totally crazy moment. And uh, I mean that, that that all this experience from previous games, I'm trying to use in every game to to actually keep myself calm because that calmness is if it's a real calmness, if you can't lie your your peace. It really gives a good good uh, outcome on the court. Right. You moved. You moved over during the interview, man. All I see is like three letters behind you everywhere. I, an M, a B, and a P. Then there's an M and a B and a P, and, a, and there's a trophy back it's there. It's not on like purpose. A, here is my. Yeah. Here is my charger. Your charger. Like okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You knew we were doing this interview two days ago, so you put it there on purpose. But I love it. That's hey. That's love to see it. So to, to finish things up, man. Two years later, after the Final Four in Victoria, a pandemic in the middle of it. You have this huge second half, and you lead your team to the, to the yearly Final Four championship. On top of it, season MVP, Final Four MVP, the yearly trophy, all sitting there behind you right now. I mean, what's going on, man? What I mean, your life – I don't see you being a different person. I didn't know you beforehand that well. I don't know you that well now. But but it's got to be just a constant just smile on your face all day long, wherever you go. Plus, you just won the, the Turkish championship. Are you just in like disbelief of everything that's going on? Uh, uh, it's 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 uh, hard to, to to give you a correct answer, maybe in one sentence. But uh, one thing that uh, I can tell honestly is that all this what you mentioned that I achieved this year, I really didn't chase, and that's something that gives me gives me energy and peace for anything else that can come to me. Uh, you know, f for the people in Serbia, for the people that follow my career, my family, my my friends, it was a big shock. All this, uh, positively, of course, because uh, uh, they knew that I was just always another another guy. I always work on myself to be normal person, nothing special. Uh, and then suddenly, all these trophies came to me, and they they. The best proven for your achievement is when your friends and your family say bravo or congrats and your teammates. You cannot lie to them uh, for such a long period. Exactly. When my teammates hug me and when they say to me thank you for like to me and Shane the most, I'm not, I don't want to divide anybody, but really I never felt that before that my teammates came to me and said thank you. And that's enough. That's enough to describe how how good feeling is to win the title, how good feeling is to, to see the faces from the workers in my team uh, in, the, in the FS when they see, uh, when, they, when they saw us and, and call me MVP, they can't lie. I mean, they are happy or, or, or not happy. And uh, that's how you get that best proven that you, are, you did something good to them, to you, to your family. And then it's recognizable from everyone. So... I'm really happy with this, and this is something that will stay with me, and I'm moving forward now. Let, let me just do do the math here before we finish up. Uh, um, four or five years ago, in the last four or five years, you went through probably the toughest time you've had playing basketball in in Germany. That 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 spell plus an injury along the way, a couple injuries along the way. Um, you lost your mom, uh, you know, unexpectedly a couple of years ago. And when you look back, can you believe that you're here now? I mean, that, that all this has happened? Just like four years ago, you, we talked about you losing some of your confidence, possibly, during a very difficult time. And so much more of the things have happened to you. And now all this at once. Is it, 
Can you believe that it was just that that short time ago? No, it's really crazy. Uh, one one funny fact that I mentioned in one previous interview a couple of days with Shane ago. Uh, when I played for Tofaj, uh, that year was in Istanbul Final Four. Mm-hmm. And uh, I came with the ferry boat uh, from Bursa to watch with my teammate Barry Shermish. Mm-hmm. And I got the ticket for the semifinal. And I was in the last row of CNN at the last row with <laughs> one of my friends. You should have asked me, man. I could have got you a better ticket. I didn't know it that time. <laughs> I almost couldn't. I, I almost uh, stay out of the gym. So you said you said semifinal. Did you make it to the final game? I didn't have tickets, so I you was just able tickets. to watch semifinal. Yes, it was full of Turkish fans, Fenerbahce fans, so I didn't have it. And that's the moment that was really just four years ago. Like that's uh, that's, that's the craziest maybe thing that it was uh, for me to look backward and now. So, so this year's. Turkish Airlines EuroLeague MVP, Final Four MVP, four years ago, couldn't even get into the stadium to watch the final game. Yes, I didn't, I didn't have tickets. Yes. I had that's only a for great, the, hey man, that's a great story. Yes, yes, <laughs> I had only for the same final, and it was last throw easier and harder than that I'm playing now. It's like crazy, <laughs> crazy for me. I think, you get a, every day. I, I think you get a ticket to any game you want now, my man. That's no big deal. We will see. Maybe people will forget me soon. <laughs> ah, no, it's not gonna happen. Hey, I gotta do one thing. You were drafted in 2014 with another Serbian player, if I'm not mistaken. That played. Did you guys play together in the mega team? Yes, yes. Me, me and Jokic, we played together. You, you for Jokic two, played two and together. And a half years. Yeah, two and, he, and a half years. He was drafted just a couple numbers before you, right? A couple picks before you. Yes. And how crazy it is that the two of you are NBA, NBA MVPs and EuroLeague MVPs in the same damn season. Did you did you guys plan this? Did you talk about it years ago? Yes, yes. We gave we shake hands uh, when we were in Mega that we were gonna make this. <laughs> no, of course we didn't plan this. Uh, it's uh, it's a crazy. Like people, I don't believe too like that it's really happening because we are from the same team. You know, it's. Uh, you, I like to also mention that also Teodosic won Euro League, Euro Cup MVP. So three of us won won everything that people can follow in in the, uh, Ser- the Serbs world. are back, man. The Serbs are back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as Turkish say, Inshallah. Uh, Inshallah. Yeah, uh, it's it's very nice story for for our country. It's uh, I believe people are proud of us. Uh, uh, Jokic is some something. Definitely that I, I, I can talk about him in hours and hours because this is just a normal guy. He's this a is just a normal man. guy <laughs> and he's, a, I mean, on the court, what, what can I say? But he's an amazing person. That's really something that I like to mention always because to stay normal, to be normal like he is on that level of everything, it's for biggest respect from my side. And I'm, I'm trying, to, I can congrats to him this way too for the MVP title. I'm very happy for him. So wh- where are you guys meeting up this summer? Where are you going to celebrate? Because I want to be there. You know, he texted me actually because uh, he don't have any social media and it's very hard to, to reach him. He lives in, a, in a, some halls in Denver. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like so much media. And he congrats to me about the uh, EuroLeague title and, and MVP award. And I was a little bit surprised even we had a very good relationship. Because it it means something. Because he doesn't follow nothing, so he right. he was he pay attention on that. And when he did it, uh, I told him, "Hey, come on, let's let's be on. You're gonna win that MVP award too." And but it's so important as uh, we're gonna celebrate that. And then uh, he said, "What what do you prefer?" I said, "You know me, I like so much Serbian music, so I'm gonna organize one restaurant in Belgrade, and we're gonna be there and sing all night long." Not even talking about basketball. And he said, yeah, that's a good idea. I, I like that. So hey, if we meet, we're going to enjoy some restaurant, not about basketball talk. You didn't have, you didn't have any uh, music contracts, any music people <laughs> coming after you after we did the interview and you and Darko were singing those Serbian songs on the court, where, did you? Because people, you? People like that so much. If you get... If so you get spontaneous. If you get some sort of contract, man, for singing, like I get 20, I get 20% of that at least. No, you know what? Fifty is fine. I'm totally fair. I don't okay, say money. Okay, good. So I'll, I'll take fifty. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. All right, no man. There's, 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 no, there's no better place than the crossover with Joe Lucas to let people know. Are you heading that way next year? Are you going to be going overseas and playing with Joker? Uh, still, I don't know nothing. Uh, uh, you've, been honest, you've been honest with me for yes, like the yes, last two weeks, man. You, you, I mean, you got nothing to trust me, uh, but to trust <laughs> me. Uh, uh, I really don't know nothing. Uh, I have some vision. Uh, one of the most important things that I, I talk to my agent is uh, that if I don't have a good chance that I would like to get from NBA, uh, I'm really happy playing in Europe and I don't I don't close the door to Europe because I enjoy here. I think it's good competition, but I would like to hear what is going on in, in uh, NBA specifically now with Oklahoma because they have the rights. Right. But I still don't have any any official offer from them, and I'm okay. I'm patient. Uh, it will come probably soon, and as that's the maximum I could say now. And on. Well, I, I think I speak on behalf of most of the people that are going to listen to this interview, man. That we 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 want you here. I want you to stay. But whatever you do, whatever Thank is you. best for you, man. That's that's the. That's Thank the, you. The, hey, we got to finish this thing off with two parts. All right, first part is a personality little personality test. I'm going to ask you a couple quick questions. You give me the answer. We got to know a little bit more about you and what you like and what you and, and a little bit more about your, your past and your future and everything else. So you get a free round trip ticket anywhere in the world you can go. What's your destination? Uh, I would like to see pyramids. I would like to see uh, I haven't been in America yet. So it's you, only, you only get one ticket, man. Ah, I thought I thought three tickets. I didn't. No, 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 one time. ticket. Ah, one ticket. Uh, I would like to see much pitch. Okay, all right. Yes. You can do, we can do that. Last movie you watched or series? Oh, I'm so bad. I'm so bad about movies and everything. But uh, <laughs> if I say Casa de Papel, this will be a commercial for Darko. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. I, uh, I, no, no, I, I, I didn't watch all, all series of, of that TV show. You didn't. You haven't watched all seasons of your boy. No, man, I'm so, I'm so out of that world. Really, like people, if I, I, I'm totally out of games, out of TV shows, movies. I have something different in my life. Uh, but let's say, uh, oh, what was the last movie? Uh, Maybe I can say uh, Peaky Blinders TV show. Peaky I Blinders, watched. okay. Yes, it's very good one. Yes. You sit down at a table to eat, and you can order anything, any food in the world. What's your go-to meal? This is so easy question for me. It's uh, pancakes. Pancakes. It's called palachinke with with Nutella. Oh. This that, is my hey, favorite. Not bad. I'll take it. I'll take it. Chinese yeah. childhood idol. My childhood, uh, Diamantidis, Dimitris Diamantidis. Yes, definitely. Any pregame superstitions? No, zero. I have nothing. I used to have so many killed me if I miss some of them. <laughs> and then I said, let's let's finish and everything. Just how go and you, play the basketball. How did you get rid of them? I've ne I still, I, just, I don't even play anymore and I still have these superstitions. When I go, if I go to the gym, I always put my left shoe on first. It's crazy. You no, know, because I I believe that superstition, first of all, it doesn't help. No, they destroy uh, it, you. Yes, and uh, I just said no, like stop it. Do every time whatever you feel, however you feel, and I live. I'm always like ready to be new. Because if I stuck in this, because really I had like three socks, left, right, first, <laughs> a knee pad. Uh, Touching this, this, it's I mean, crazy, like, isn't it? it's crazy. And then I said, it makes me tired. No, it makes me feel so tired. Yes. I, if there's one game that you can go back in time and you and you could play again, which one would it be, and why? <laughs> Maybe against the uh, Test Cup final to win the title. <laughs> I kind of figured that might be the one. Yeah. Top three Euroleague memories. That's gonna be pretty easy right now. Top three. Oof! All this from this year. <laughs> this year. <laughs> I would, I would add, I would add uh, next championship and winning that MVP award is uh, being able to play Final Four in Belgrade was amazing, really mm -hmm. amazing moment. My first one in the city that I grew up, it's, it's crazy. 
You're a lucky man, man. You're a lucky man. Yeah. yeah I know Peter Plays is luckier than me. He won the title in his home. Oh, city. that's true, so, too. I didn't even think about that. This yeah. is unfair. This is unfair, but I'm yeah. happy for him. I know this is a tough question for you. You're only 27, but when this part of your life is over, what do you plan on doing? Any any thoughts of it yet? Uh, actually, I, I'm already doing, uh, besides basketball, some things, and uh, this is something that I would like to keep doing uh, when I finish. But I think the way I approach basketball, the way I like basketball, I would like to stay in basketball. I would like to be the the, the first of the first thoughts in my mind when you ask me this question. I would like to work with the kids or with the guys from 18 to 22 years old because this is the moment that most of the guys are, uh, disappear in the basketball, yeah. and this is something that I would like to have chance to help them and from the not from the stars players that they will probably play basketball but from the solid ones to make them better i would like to do that honestly for 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 the future to help yeah. these guys from for this age it's hard the stage to resist it's good to have a plan man it, believe me it's good to have a plan when you're done take yeah. it take it from an old man who's been through it now here's the hardest part, man. This is it, and then I let you go. I appreciate all your time, especially after all these victories. And all, I'm sure everybody's been been wanting to be with you. But this is the yearly trivia quiz test, and you're going to be uh, probably the last person to do it this season. I'm thinking the leader right now is Grigonis. He was your teammate, right? In Lithuania, did you guys uh, play together? Uh, no, no, we haven't catch uh, caught it, each other. He he played. Uh, he came uh, after in Alba. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But we are same age, uh, same generation. We played many times national things against each other. I believe he's our leader right now uh, for for the season. So each question I give you right now is worth ten points. Well, the first one's worth ten points. The second one's worth twenty, and it keeps going. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Five questions. Okay. Right? He's got seventy, I believe, if I remember correctly. Question number one. Which team ended in last position of the EuroLeague standings this season? Uh, how much time I have? I know who, who was the uh, not, uh, one before. Maybe Red Star? No, Kinky. Oh, yeah. I didn't <laughs> even remember they played this year. <laughs> Sorry. It's not fair to them, but, but no, this most, is really most people. But, I just want I just want to warn you ahead of time. Most people get the ten point questions, so you're not doing so well already. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Maybe I get better with the harder one. All right, number two for worth twenty points. After right. yourself and Shane Larkin, who scored more points during the final four for Anna uh, In the uh, last three years or in the history of the club? No, no, no. This year. This final four, you and Shane uh -huh. were the highest scores in the final four. Yes. And, and who was the uh, third highest score on your team? Rodi Bobois. You missed that one too. It was Sertak, Shanley. Yeah, Sertak, 12 in the final and how much in the semifinal? I don't remember. He, he, he saved you guys in the final in the beginning of the yes. game. Yes, yes. You're That's 0 for 2. We, I also want to let you know we don't have anybody who has zero points too, so there's a little bit of pressure on you now. <laughs> it's good to be first in everything. <laughs> All right, who is the rebounding leader of this year's Final Four altogether? The, the two games played, who led the Final Four in rebounds? How am I supposed to know this? Well, you're supposed to. You're supposed to know the other two. You weren't supposed to know this one, but. Yeah, that's true. This one's a tougher one. Maybe uh, Nikola Mirotic? No, Toko Singalia. 16 total rebounds, seven in the semifinals. And nine I know that Mirotic had 11 in the semifinal. I didn't know how much he had against us. No, not, 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 more, than, not more than five, obviously. Yeah, that's true. We played right, with you. Here's okay. your forty. I, I have... Here's your forty-point question, and if you, I, I don't know you're going to get this, you probably should get it, but I don't know if you are because you've been a little bit out of, like you've been celebrating life. But here's yes. your forty-point question: Which team has just been crowned the Adidas Next Generation Tournament champion this season? Uh, Real Madrid. They beat Barca. Yeah, forty points for the big man. There you go. You, 
at least you got these four now. Now you could win the season title right here. Yeah, not only are you gonna be like double MVP plus the yearly title, you might win the yearly trivia test also. With the fifth and final question worth 50 points. How many block shots has Shane Larkin had during this this EuroLeague season? Oh my god. This is probably a tricky question because he didn't have much. <laughs> so maybe five. Oh man, you missed my two. It's three. Ah, shit, that's a bit. I thought I thought for sure you're gonna get. I wanted to give you a little bit of a hint, but I think you're going to. Nah, nah, nah. Even if nah, you're going to call me tomorrow and say, hey, "Go, you, you, you take take away from me." You stole another Took title away. from me. Yes. yes. <laughs> My never... man, Vasa, it, it's been a pleasure, man. I, I I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of this this moment of your life where where everything. Is, is gone so amazingly for you, for your family, for everybody. You took this time to be out. It's been, what, almost an hour and a half here. No problem. With, I can talk a lot. <laughs> I know, man, but I love it. I love it. I, I, and I just really appreciate the fact that you have been open with me, um, honest with me, and, and, and you've never, ever, like, cut. You've never held back, man. You just, you're the man, and you just keep rolling it. And no matter what you do next year, I'll be a follower, man. I'll be right there watching you no matter what. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. I was honestly a little bit scared that you would not invite me in this show because I saw how many players you called, but thanks God I won this MVP title. I wasn't it, good enough for your time, for your show before. No, this. that's not that's that's not no, true at I'm all. Joking, that's not I'm true joking. at all. It's, it's, it was a big pleasure for me too, and uh, this is part of, of our job, but it's way better when when you have good good connection with someone to to enjoy during this interview. Yeah, I loved it, man. It was great. It was great talking to you. And and and, and don't think we just brought you out just because you're the MVP, man. It's fine. It's fine. People <laughs> use me always. <laughs> enjoy it. Enjoy it while you can, man.